Hey everyone, my name is Sam. Thanks for checking out this video. If you get to the end and liked it, then subscribe, bell notification, and thumbs up the video. Um, last night I had to go to the hospital. I sprained my ankle, so I can't stand up right now. So we're just, um, well, for more than like two minutes. So we're just adjusting the setting, and I actually kind of like this now. <laughs> um, so yeah, I sprained my ankle on Friday, so I have to go back for follow-up x-rays next Friday in a week and we'll see how it goes but for now I am strapped in a boot which it's been a few years since I did that when I was a kid like I it was like three or four years something like that like almost to the day of the one before I hairline fractured my ankle and it was the same ankle <laughs> my doctor looked at my extra and he's like how many times have you fractured your leg before because there's there's clear fractures <laughs> it's like it doesn't look like there's any new ones but we'll have to come back and make sure so but yeah um, I want to talk about the books that I read the past couple weeks. I only read, I think, two books last weekend, so I decided to, like, merge it, um, into this week's, which seemed logical at the time, and then this morning I was like, oh my god, I don't want to film because I didn't sleep last night because I can't get in a comfortable position with my boot and my sprained ankle, so... So right off the bat, I read The Passion of Dulce by Julie Berry. This was my... You know, I've uh, my attempt to get through all of the Julie Berry backlog. Um, so this is the third Julie Berry book I've read. I read Lovely War last month, which I just absolutely loved and devoured. And then I also read The Scandalous Sisterhood of Perkwilla Place, which was so much fun. I loved that book as well. But this was the only one that I had actually owned by the author before. So I think of the two other books that I read by her pretty recently, I think this is my least favorite of the three, but I can also like read it and understand why I got a, 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 an award. I think it's um, not something that's going to ever like mass appeal in the YA community, but she has amazing writing, just absolutely amazing writing. And I just love when authors take these like kind of like, I don't want to say unimportant, but these like non-star figures um, of history. Um, that maybe not necessarily do anything like overturn, you know, the way a war is going or like they're not like add like like this gold star person who helps defeat Hitler or anything like that. But I love when we take these people the same way we did with um, Mistress of the Ritz. These take these people who just did something in their daily lives um, that was either rebellious to the time or that seemed like just nothing out of the ordinary and then we we mess with that a little bit and flesh it out and give them a story and a voice so julie berry found these primary source documents and kind of fleshed with it and the passion of the dulce reminds me a little bit the story of dulce reminds me quite a bit of um joan of arc a little bit with the whole like she speaks to god so but she's a woman um and it's not necessarily things that she's hearing are not things that necessarily go along with what men running the religious order of the time want because the religious order at the time of cereal was very profitable for <laughs> for men and they got to do a bunch of stuff there's uh oh what's that um uh uh i, I don't know if they'll ever do it again but buzzfeed did a uh, ruining history and one of the episodes was about like three bad popes and they were saying in like the video that there's like literally a wikipedia article of like sexually active popes and you're like okay so like we had a lot of rules that we made women abide by but like men there were more guidelines at the time period so she runs after they try and execute her and kind of performs these miracles along the way ends up in a smaller community and you know, it, it follows that community as well as the people from the religious institution sort of chasing after her, which, you know, when you don't have cell phones and social media, it's a little bit more difficult. Um, so it was really interesting. I think it's definitely for for lovers of historical fiction. If you're going into this expecting like a high paced fantasy, that's not what this is in any way. I don't think I really ever saw anywhere that it was promised as such. Um, it is much more about the history and kind of the parallels in this that you know we we look at when we look at how we treated women and when we had that that the the religious institutions kind of rule all of how we act in society i really really enjoyed this actually i gave it a four out of five stars and um yeah i just love julie berry i'm gonna have to look into all of her other books to start working my way through her whole back catalog of books so really enjoyed this. If you like historical fictions, I think this is one you will enjoy. Okay, anyways, we'll let Sherlock sit here for however long he feels like it, because as soon as I 
you know, get him settled until he d decides he doesn't want to be here anymore. So I also read Tristan Strong Punches a Hole in the Side by Kwam Mambalia. I think that's how you say it. So this is Black um, American, oh, it's African American owned voices. Um, and it pulls in West African folklore. It's also from the Rick Riordan imprint, um, which we support and stand on, stand, stand, we support and stand on this channel. Um, hello. Uh, it's book one of two, and despite it, how fat it is, actually, I'm kind of surprised they didn't make it into a trilogy. So Tristan Strong is grieving uh, in, uh, hard. Um, his friend died in an accident on a school bus cra um, crash, basically, that they got into after a school field trip. So he's grieving. He also is trying to get into boxing, which his dad and his grandfather were both really big and popular in, and he loses his first fight. So he goes back. Well, not back. He lives in Chicago, but his family for one month in the summer or so is sending him to his grandparents to try and get him kind of out of his funk, try and get him back on his feet. And West African folklore pops up. This was really cool. I've never had a book, really, I don't think. Um, maybe Beast of Night, Beast Made of Night, but I don't even know what if that one was. I'd have to double check. But this was like wholly devoted to West African folklore. Um, can I help you? So, uh, you know, we end up in this kind of alternative fantasy world instead of the contemporary setting that we start in, and we meet all of these characters, this cast, basically, um, from West African folklore, and through a series of events, Tristan Strong punches a hole in the sky, and it creates chaos in this fantasy world. So when he gets to this fantasy world, we find out people are going missing. No one really knows what's going on. They assume it's this other people. And then we find out those people thought it was like the people Tristan Strong is with, but they're like, wait, we're both, both of us have people going missing. I don't understand. So it's following who exactly is causing these missing people. He's also got this temptation character going on. Um, and on top of grieving, right? For his friend, the loss of his best friend, he also has this journal that his best friend was writing that he hasn't gotten himself to open since his friend died. So, but he clings to that, like, like, like death, um, for life or death, um, in this book. So it's, it's really interesting, honestly. I love that we're getting these own voices. I love that Rick Riordan is such a damn ally. This imprint is fantastic. I definitely would want to reread this, I think, before I read the sequel, because I feel like because it is like a new, uh, there's these new cultural influences and these new folklores that I'm not super well versed in. I've in pop culture seen pieces of it incorporated, but never a book wholly devoted to it. So I kind of finished it and was like, I want to kind of go away and look in more into some of these um, West African folklore stories and characters. And then when the book two comes out, reread this, and then maybe I'll have a better understanding of maybe why certain characters do certain things that they do, and then read the sequel. But this is just another really solid book from the Rick Riordan imprint, and then it's got own voices, um, and it's just really good solid message, and we're getting those new cultural influences. I love Rick Riordan. I wish bigger authors like him would do what he does. Like, it's kind of sad how rare this whole, like, actual allyship is in the publishing world. Oh my god, also, did anyone else see Random House Publishing posted a tweet? I think it was, like, on New Year's Day or the day before, and it had, like, you know how people can make, like, using certain dashes or whatever, like, make a picture, and it had, like, 2020 read diverse books, and, like, they just got dragged. Like, dragged. The amount of comments from readers, publishers, um, or readers and uh, authors mostly were literally like, do you publish diverse books? Or you should probably publish a couple of those too. And then I chimed in of maybe don't sell your book so like such a crappily manner to libraries. So the same minorities who statistically speaking have to use the library because they tend to, unfortunately, many of them be in lower income brackets. Um, all of a sudden can't access those books that you just send, oh, make sure you read them, but you have to buy them because we're not going to make them affordable for your libraries to read. They end up having to delete the tweet. It's kind of hilarious. I just loved. I lived for it. I lived for it. I also, for my last prompt of my 2019 TBR and Beyond Reading Challenge, read The Taming of Shrew. I mean, like, looking at it now, like, it's very sexist, okay? But I kind of love this. This is this and Much Ado About Nothing, which, again, both of them have issues of sexism, are, like, my favorite Shakespeare plays. I had to read all of his tragedies in school. So grade nine for uh, all my English classes, grade nine, I had to read... Hi! Do you want down or do you want to move over to the couch again? There we go. Okay. So grade nine, I had to read Romeo and Juliet. 
grade 10 I had to read Macbeth, grade 11 I had to read Hamlet, grade 12 I had to read King Lear, and then university first year English I had to read King Lear, and then I took a Shakespearean English course so I had to read King Lear. <laughs> I'm so damn tired of having to read King Lear. Um, and uh, a couple other tragedies and then I took a uh, Victorian era um, English history or English like history of the literature of the time and then we ended up having to end up reading a Shakespeare play for like I guess context for how he influenced other playwrights and then we had to read like The Alchemist and all that stuff. Anyways I've had to read far too much Shakespeare but we never got to read all his I got to like one shot in like the Shakespeare class that I finally took was the only one that I got to read any of his comedies in. I was like why are you guys trying to make us all so depressed? Everyone dies in all of his th plays. Why not give us a break sometimes of the taping of the shoe or much ado about nothing in high school? But no I had to read that dark ass shit. Also I will never have never make myself read King Lear again. I also picked up Crier's War by Nina Varela. Um, I tried to get to this one in November and just couldn't squeeze it in. So I finally picked it up in December. And we all know that I high key adore this cover. The the the, the covers for this one was just it, it was so freaking good. So honestly this is sort of like a fantasy with a sci-fi influences. So this world had a big falling out pretty recently in the last couple decades and there was humans made automation and then those automations kind of took over and they've had this switch in power so the automation kind of beings are now sort of running things and they're just like putting up with the humans but there's some violent attacks between everyone and then there's the whole political construct of this world as well so um our main character has you know she's that character you know in all those books where you're like you know, if it's, you know, races or automation or whatever, when you have that differencing that, that divides the, the community and then there's that person that's of wealth and privilege but is like, I don't understand why they're evil and I want to learn more about them. And then they always end up like falling in love with that side and all that stuff. That That's kind of where this sort of goes. Um, we have our female-female romance in here, which was so cute. Um, I'm, I will definitely read the sequel. And as long as it's the same price point of $21.99, I will definitely pick it up as long as it's the same cover theme because this is gorgeous. I think I would definitely want to read read it though because it's very um it's not very like romance centric but I feel like it's very romantic writing and tone and everything if you know what I mean and I don't think I was really in the headspace when I read this to read that but I just really wanted to read it so I did um even that aside I think it's around a 3.5 for me I don't think it's necessarily a unique YA fantasy but again it's giving us that even if we're kind of retelling those same tropes and those same stories we've, al we've always done that from a cis straight white um, point of view if we're incorporating some diversity into that I don't see anything wrong with that um, I also have talked about this before that I have literally in the human world never heard people say automaton so then every time I go into the world of like fantasies where they they use automaton like pretty regularly I just for some reason I enjoy it I can't explain it totally but I liked the characters I don't think they were super super fleshed out though for sure I can I could it can definitely use with more development of them but I like the main character for the most part I don't think she is anything special compared to all the other YA fantasies that I've read um but we get some female female romance representation in here I for the most part like the relationships that uh, everyone does have but I think they can just be elevated once we get more character development and I'm curious to see where it goes in the world because the world obviously has a rebellion of the people versus automatons that are happening um, because the powers that be you know it's not working for everyone as it always seems to be in 2020 because we're already trending world war three on twitter right so i yeah i really enjoyed this actually um i think it yeah it doesn't necessarily deserve anything like mind-bogglingly hypey i'm sorry i'm trying to have as much energy as i can but i'm just so drained i think in the past like three weeks i've been to the hospital like six times between my surgery and my bandage changes and then the er visit i'm just so tired arguably one of my like most anticipated releases of 2020 was the dragon republic by rf kuang so i was a little nervous to pick this up but i'm really really happy i did so i reread the poppy war a couple book couple i think the week before i picked this up finally and i know this is gonna come sound bad to, like right at the beginning but let me explain so this book is a hot mess by that 
I mean, like literally everything that happens in the book is a hot mess. The world is chaos after everything that happens with the Poppy War, especially at the ending of it. I don't want to totally spoil it, but like lots of people die. And there is this weird, there's like the Republic that is trying to essentially revolt against the, the you know, existing government that be. There's the existing government that be. And then there's the like Federation and like, it's just, there's multiple sides at play in this world. And Rin is dealing difficult, has, has is dealing a lot in this book with trying to control her power, um, having access to it, understanding how it runs, while also like simultaneously kind of constantly being betrayed by people. No one, you never know who the heck to trust. No one is telling the truth to one. Everyone is lying for their own benefit. Whoa, the sun just like totally disappeared on me there. Ooh, okay. <laughs> Don't know where the sun went there. Um, but yeah. The, the cast expands an awful lot from the first book. We meet some some newer characters, uh, some of the older older cast as well from book one, but a lot of them have definitely changed. Um, and it's just really, really like well-developed world and politics and conflicts. Um, I think that's the strength of the first book as well is the conflict and the world development. It doesn't make any sense for this to be a debut series. She has amazing writing. Um, oh, this one's coming back. Um, yeah, Rin just goes through a lot in this book, and I feel like the most interesting part of her was her trying to figure out this power that she was given at the end of the Poppy War. And then there's this kind of introduction, more so, of sort of religious fundamentalism, and that seems to be a big dividing power, uh, or a big dividing topic between all of these different sides in this politics, um, in, this, in the politics of this world, is that everyone has this different belief. Some are, you know, monotheistic, some are polytheistic, Rin has her own beliefs after she literally interacted with gods at the end of the poppy war and they're still in here um and then she's dealing with the fallout of the big decision that she made at the end of poppy war um and all of the deaths so it's really interesting i also just kind of want to give a content or content warning i don't know if it's a trigger warning but rin and this whole world as you might have been able to tell from the name of the poppy war there is opioids in this in the poppy war there is forced drug addiction um and then this is kind of there's a detox in here of her getting off drugs but there is still continued use so that's just something to be cautious of if you've had a substance abuse problem in the past and you're trying to get clean this may not be a good series for you to tackle it is by no means glorified um it is not seen as a good positive thing it's literally just a tool in the world because it does pull from chinese influences history culture and we had the opioid wars. So that's where a lot of those influences come from. So that's just something to be aware of. And lastly, I read Shadow Frost by Coco Ma, um, which is probably honestly the coolest author's name ever. So honestly, the whole reason I was super interested in this is the author is Asian Canadian. So I was like, yay, getting some Canadian rep in there, but in general, but even when we have Canadian rep, it's generally white authors. So it's nice to get a little bit more, <laughs> a little bit more range in the voices that we have coming out of Canada. So this honestly reminds me a fair bit of Cryer's War. So again, I don't think it is necessarily mind bogglingly, like it's not like redefining the YA fantasy genre by any means. It is a YA fantasy. I think it incorporates a lot of the same general tropes and structures that you're used to. Um, I think I preferred this one just in terms of, of writing more than Cryer's War. I think it's got decent development of the world, the conflict, the politics, and the characters. Whereas I feel like Cryer's War, I was a little bit lacking on the character development. Um, I... Oh, um, also, before I even forget, because I keep forgetting when I'm telling people this, there is a male-male romance in this as well. Um, I really, really loved the main character. She's strong as heck. Like, she, and I'm, for some reason, I don't exactly know why, I take a really big, like, love of a world that has not necessarily just magic, but we take the magic and we start, like, having this like when we start categorizing it kind of like we do with like elements like that we have a world where you have like 14 different kinds of magic and normally you like specialize in a certain kind of magic right so i just find that interesting when we always have in those worlds there's always like a one magic that you know we don't talk about or it's the dark magic or when we have these characters who are who can do all of the magics you know when someone it's like avatar the last airbender right when all of a sudden you're supposed to just be able to do fire or water in this reincarnation but and then someone comes along and can do them all right so our main character is living in this world where you know we have 
these divisions and categorizations of magic and like she's you know got some control issues with some of them but she has really untapped power and potential but she's not been given the training that she needs there's also of course a lineage reveal which we know I'm a big fan of so I loved this I think at the my only kind of beef with the writing really was you know at the beginning of a book when it's you know the language is a little bit different when the author is introducing you to the world and the conflicts and when they're taking you through like oh and the main character is walking through the village it'll explain certain parts of it so you can start building and developing in the world and the characters in your brain I think they stay they stop doing that too fast maybe an extra chapter or two of that language could have been kept um, but I feel like there's like you know maybe one chapter and then it switches the language right into okay you know everything about this world and I think it just needed to give you a bit uh, another chapter of those baby steps of helping you dip your foot into this new world and and develop um all of the limiters and the characters and everything in your brain you know what I mean so in the end I think I gave this a four out of five stars I will definitely definitely be reading the sequel I think there's supposed to be three total I've given a title to the sequel but that's all I've seen and yeah once again, love the Asian Canadian um, representation for authors. And then we have some male male romance rep as well, which is always a good thing. So those are the books that I've read in the past couple of weeks. I hope this video letting is okay. The sun just randomly disappeared while I was filming, even though it's like only noon. I don't know what's happening. And then Watson naturally is snoring because that's just what we do. And I just don't have the energy right now. <laughs> so yeah. Um, let me know in the comment section down below what you read these past two weeks. I'd love to know if you've read any of these books. I'd also love to, any of these books. I'd also love to know what you thought. I will link all of these books in the description box down below where I will also link all of my social media. If you follow me, I will follow you back.